Okay, so how, how to fuel your race. Now, depending on where your start point is right now, if you're watching this, if you're interested in how to fuel your race, there definitely is an improvement that everybody can make from where they are right now to where the optimal is. Now, where the optimal is and where the science is so far, that we know that cross-country skiers can take in over 120 grams of carbohydrate per hour. Now, for a runner, you need to think about how the stomach moves during the activity. So if you're running along, there's a lot of stomach movement and therefore you can only handle so much. And when I say handle so much, it's not just about getting, you've got to think that it's not just about getting the carbohydrate and the energy gel or the energy drink into the stomach. You don't want sloshing around. It's got to go into the stomach and then you've got to train the stomach to be able to use those carbohydrates, those calories, uh, and those minerals, sodium and the potassium, etc., magnesium, you've got to be able to use those properly. So you've got to get it into the bloodstream because you want to get that energy into the muscles. And that's a process. So like, I'll get the message often like, oh, I'm at the expo, what do I need to pick up in order to, it's too late. Like go with what you know. So the training program, it's not just a training program to get yourself to run faster and to get yourself to run further. It's also you're training your your stomach in order to take it in what it needs to take in on race day for you to have the optimal race. Now that there is an optimal and it will be unique to you. It will be very, very personal to you. So you've got to train with it. So to give you an example, if well, from your start point, you're probably the likelihood is that you've probably had, if you're running half marathons and marathons, the likelihood is, like most of us, you've probably had a point within a longer race where the wheels have fallen off. And while I mean, it's a great experience, it, it, not at the time, it's not funny at the time, but you're experiencing failing. You're experiencing the body saying, no, I, you know, I'm finished. You've not fueled me properly. It's always to do with fuel and obviously a little bit to do with training. But if you can run 5K, with training, you can run a, uh, a marathon, and with training, you can run a 100K. It, it's not a case of, it's not, it's, it's the training, yes, to be on the thing, but to be on the feet, but it's it's the nutrition in order to take you there. Not, nothing different to a car. Like a car has to be used to going long distances and gradually longer distances. The car is already set up for that. But if you don't put the petrol in, if you don't put the gasoline in, whatever you want to say, then you're not going to be able to do that. And if you go ridiculously fast in the car, you're going to blow, you're going to burn the petrol, and therefore you won't be able to get to your destination. It's no different to that. But your body has to become very efficient at getting that carbohydrate in. And certain things will work for certain people. You'll hear that certain people feel sickly after certain gels. So gels don't work for some people that need sports drink. What is the right sports drink? Playing with different ones and experimenting it over the course of a training schedule, over usually 10, 12 weeks. Um, training schedule can be dodgy because you don't want to get any of those long runs and any of those interval sessions wrong. You don't want problems in those either. But it's, it's paramount that you get your fueling system right before you race. So what do I use? Now, now, if I take myself back to, um, to not so long ago, so maybe four years ago, um, I, I, you just read it, you read the back of a gel, and it will tell you it's got a hundred calories. This is most gels, hundred calories, twenty-five grams of carbohydrate. It's got a bit of potassium, a bit of sodium, and usually a bit of magnesium. And that's all in a nice small gel, and it's very kind of convenient to carry those, a few of those in your pockets. And it, it usually tells you on the back of the gel to take one an hour. Now, twenty-five grams of carbohydrate. If to, sorry, every forty minutes. Yeah, every forty minutes you should take one gel, which would be at twenty-five grams of carbohydrate. That would mean thirty-seven and a half grams of carbohydrate per hour. Now, new science, and not necessarily that new. Cyclists have known this for a long time, but their stomach movement is different than a runner during a, during a race. But as we've tested runners, and we know what a runner can actually handle, it's all a case of training. And once I went from thirty-seven and a half grams of carbohydrate to 80 grams of carbon, and that was a process. So I went 50 grams, and then 60 grams, and then, 70, and then 80 grams, and now I'm at 90 grams an hour. So what that means for my body is like the, 
not only am I energized throughout the whole race and throughout the, all the long runs and all the interval sessions, energy is no longer an issue. I have the energy. It's about uh, building the heart and lungs, building, you know, building the blood and making the blood stronger. And it's about, you know, the body as a byproduct of that training is going to come along for the journey and it's going to build the muscles in the right place and I'm going to be quick and efficient over the ground. So I'm energized. It's no longer a headache. It's no longer a thought that I need to do that. I've already found the best solution for me. Uh, for me, it was Morton. So I use this stuff. Like you can have it in gel format. You can have it in gel format, which will tell you exactly the same. One serving is 40 grams, which is 100 calories. Uh, 25 grams of car carbohydrate, sodium, um, there'll be, there will be some potassium and calcium, potassium, calcium, sodium, etc. in there, but it's, it's a regular gel, but it's a, it's a better system because it's a multi carbohydrate fuel. It's a multi sugar system. Um, but this stuff for me, this is the 320 and they also do it in a 160. This will give me 80 grams of carbohydrate per bottle. So you fill it up to the line, 500 mils, you put this in, um, and that is your that is your 80 grams of carbohydrate per hour, if that's what you're aiming for. And if you're currently, if you're doing what I was doing, one gel every 40 minutes, uh, one gel every half an hour, do the maths on that and see what carbohydrate. But if you can get one of those into your, uh, into your system every hour, and, and, and naturally, it's not 500 mils in one go, it's you know 100 mils at a time at different stations and you have to kind of think about during during the race like where are your drink stations and i get it that it, you know for if you're doing a trail race then it's a bit different because you're carrying what you're usually drinking on you or you're about to pick it up from your checkpoint at the aid station where you but your drug uh, bag is going to be dropped in a marathon if you're an elite marathon runner then we get our bottles um we get our bottles on uh, the table, which is a massive advantage. If you're not drinking the Lucasade or the Powerade, but you're able to pick up your own drink that you've been training with, it's a huge advantage, yeah? But if you can do that within your, um, if you can set up the plan that you're gonna use and take the products that you're gonna use within the race in your training, it's gonna have a major effect. So if I was just able to carry gels, I'd need three of those to hit 75 grams of carbohydrate um, per hour. And if I wanted to do the maths, I wanted to do 90 grams and do that over marathon 221 for me or 100K six hours, then I'm going to need to pick gels up because if you're going to take three of those times six and a half hours, 18, 19, 20, 21 gels, it's not going to work to carry those. Yeah. I'm already going to be too heavy. So, um, so you need to kind of like have a plan in place and it's not too difficult to have people on the course or to have your bottles in certain places or to think about what is actually in the Powerade or whoever, whoever the race sponsor of drinks is. It's not too difficult to do the maths on that, but it's usually not calorific. That Powerade will say low sugar or something crazy like that, which is sugar is exactly what you want during the race. So that's, it, it, again, the main point is you've got to get your stomach used to and train. This is as important to train your stomach over the weeks of your training schedule as it is to train your legs, as it is to train your heart, as it is to train your lungs. You've got to get it used to. And you can train, you can train your stomach really easy. If you have a really sensitive stomach, you're going to need to play around with different things. But the beauty with the Martin stuff is, and this is not an advertisement, but the beauty of the Martin stuff is it doesn't taste much. I used to love goo and I used to love goo because it tastes amazing. But then it's like caramel and salted caramel and espresso love and all those types of flavors. And you really look forward to it. It comes to a point in, for instance, 100K race, um, and they're really small as well, so you could just fit them everywhere and you kind of have them on the way. It comes to a point, um, like in a 100K race, after four or five hours, where you're just like, I don't want anything more that's sweet. Whereas, um, and so people will turn to like uh, savory flavors and things like that. You've got to get your, your body used to whatever you're gonna take to. So Morton for me was definitely a game changer because I could put more carbohydrates in. Um, I have more calories, um, and the benefits of that are simple. I'm energized throughout the race. 
I don't have to think about it anymore because it's just second nature, yeah? It's just happening, I'm hydrating at the same time and I know what works. I know what works in training, I know what works for the interval session, I know what works for the long run, and I know what works therefore for the race, yeah? But the main benefit has got to be as, as equally important as, as energized throughout the race and training is my recovery is so much faster because I'm having the right food before, and that's usually fruit, um, and you know a lot of banana, I eat a lot of bananas. Uh, I'm in the right food food before, so that's putting you know energy into the system, ready to use by the muscles. My my body is already fat. My the fat metabolism system um, is optimized because I'm doing a lot of my easy and recovery runs fasted, and then on top of that, I've got a great nutrition plan during the race. And what that means is less muscle breakdown, less less uh, muscle damage during the race. So if, you know, like you do a weight session, if you're training the chest, what you're doing is micro tearing the fibers in, in the chest. And what they do is they grow back and that's where the soreness comes in. That's where the pump maybe comes in uh, during during the session and the micro tear, as they come back, there's a soreness there. It's exactly the same thing in the legs after a race. Um, and unless you feel, if you feel that along the way and before, you're miles ahead in your recovery, which means you're gonna rec recover faster, and fuller more so that you can go faster or harder more often and then you can improve more. It's that simple. So the improvement is, it's insane. It might, it, it probably is for most people the, miss, the missing thing that people underestimate how useful that actually can be.